Okay. Um, I am going to do a very brief online tutorial or introduction to using our SPSS um, program for statistical analysis. Um, I'm also going to share a little bit about how we can use SPSS or, or what I'm expecting um, from our Kronk exercises that you'll see um, are due and how to sort of format those um, and, and meet those expectations. Um, so <clears throat> bear with me, it's a lot of clicking. Um, and I've noticed that every time I try and share my screen and a different window pops up, that it stops sharing my screen. And so um, hopefully this, I can, I can remember when every time I was kicked out. This is about the fifth recording I've done on this. So hopefully I'm a little more streamlined here. Um, so I'm going to click share screen. And when I open up my SPSS, which is a backwards E or the sigma sign, um, something like this will pop up. Now for us, when we're just starting out, we can click new data set, okay? And we can go ahead and open. Okay, as I mentioned, that notified me I'm kicked out. So this is what pops up then when I click open. I have this data view um, set with the different boxes or different cells. Um, there also is the variable view, okay? So when we're entering in our data view, we might be able to enter in some of the numbers. Again, this is quantitative, so it's heavy with numbers. Um, so say I'm, I'm doing some demographic data um, where I'm having somebody check whether or not they're male or female on a survey, okay? So how do I enter male and female into SPSS when SPSS deals with numbers? So I might just code, if you will, um, one as female, um, two as male, okay, two male, one female, two male, one female, two male, two male, one female, okay, something like that. Well, let's just do one more. Okay, so one again means female, two means male. Um, when we go to the variable view here, we can see here that we have variables entered. Um, we can choose to name what variable that is. So we might just choose to do gender, okay? Um, with, we're, we're using numeric um, types of data. Um, we can, since one is, is female, two is male, um, we don't necessarily need decimal points. So we can just simply put in zero there. Um, again, we are still using um, numeric data. Okay, you'll see here when, since we clicked zero in the decimal place, um, that the decimal number here switched to zero also. Um, when it comes to labels, this can be very helpful in helping us remember what our values mean. So if you remember our value of one, we were going to code those as female and our value two, was going to be coded as male. And then we click add and then okay. Um, another important piece is the measure. So if right now it says that our measure was unknown or it, it defaulted to scale, right? So scale might be some kind of weight or some kind of length or something along those lines. Um, when we're looking at ordinal, there might be some sort of order to our, our data, um, meaning that, you know, if we're looking at taking demographic data of children and what grade level they're in, right? Grade one, two, three, four, they're sort of that logical order of, of numerical value. Um, and so this, we are going to mark as just simple nominal data. When I think of nominal data, I think of just simply having some sort of numerical value that means something, okay? So just a number, if you will. And so one is female, two is male. So that would be nominal data. If I go back and I take a look at our data view, I can see here that we now have gender. Um, the type is some kind of numeric um, value um, and it's a nominal 
type of measure. And so one, two, two, one, two, one, two, two, one, one, okay? When we go to analyze our data, and a lot of times we might have several variables. We're comparing variables, um, those sorts of things. And so your Kronk book um, talks you and takes you through step by step on what to enter, how to enter it, um, even what to save it as, okay? And so that's important to follow his step-by-step -step directions on, on what to do, how to do it, when to save. Some of those exercises will actually um, contribute and, and build off of each other. So you might be asked in an exercise later on to actually um, pull up a data set um, that you've already entered. And so I can show you, or I will show you how to do that here shortly. Um, so just to kind of give you a basis of where we'll work a lot and what we'll click on a lot in SPSS is after we've entered in our data, right, we can go to analyze. Um, and a lot of times we might be, you know, comparing means. So a one sample t-test, independent sample t-test, pair sample t-test, an ANOVA, Okay, those kinds of tests, and, and we'll be going over that ty those types of analyses, and that's how you would get to them. Um, we have general linear models, so this might be univariate, multivariate, or repeated measures. Those are more complicated types of statistical analysis to run. Um, we might have correlations. Um, so how strong is a relationship, or how strong of a relationship is there? Um, between a couple variables or between some variables. Um, I think another important piece is the non-parametric tests. So sometimes when we don't meet all of the stringent assumptions of our um, data gathering or, or of our statistical analysis, um, say with t-tests, those sorts of, sorts of things, we might be running more of the non-parametric tests. Okay, and so non-parametric tests aren't necessarily comparing the means of scores. Um, they're comparing more of the medians of scores. And usually we look at that when we don't meet those stringent guidelines or assumptions um, of those different parametric tests, such as your t-tests, independent sample t-tests, those kinds of things. Okay, so those, that's where we're gonna be working a lot with in SPSS, just kind of the basic areas. Um, for a sake of, um, we have gender here. Um, if I go to descriptive statistics and I simply go to frequencies, okay? And I'm going to bump over general um, gender to our variables. And I'm going to just simply click okay. Okay, I'm going to share the screen that pops up. So this is the output screen. Okay, so this is what screen pop, pops up automatically once you hit any kind of analysis to run it. And so you can see here that our statistics, it tells us we ran frequencies on top, um, that N, our total sample size is 10. Um, we can see the frequencies of female is five, the frequency of male is five, and then it gives us an overall percentage also, okay? Um, so very nice, simple, user-friendly chart. Um, so say we're doing our Kronk exercises, right? And we're running our output. How I would recommend going to submit your assignments or those exercises um, is this. Um, you can right click um, after you run your analysis, you can right click, select last output, and you'll see now there's boxes over all of that, right, what you just ran. And so I would again right click, click copy, okay, and then I would open up just a blank Word document. So let me go back to share screen. Right here. OK. 
okay, I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna just keep the source formatting and I'm going to click paste. You can go in here, you can delete some of the extra lines to clean it up and not take up so much space. But in our Kronk textbook or workbook, I should say, um, and with the assignments or exercises that have been assigned, um, they each are assigned a particular number, right? And so it might be um, exercise, just looking for here. Sorry, I'm just trying to, Do exercise one point. We can just do one point four, right? And then the title of that would be loading and saving files. So what I'm looking for here is you've labeled now what exercises that you're working on, um, and the title of that whatever that exercise is. Then you copy and paste your actual data set, or I mean your data output, okay? Um, so this doesn't really, with the notes section, it doesn't mean a whole lot to me. Um, I'm not necessarily worried on that, but I am looking at, do you have the right chart? Do you have the right output here? Did you enter, do we have the right numbers? Um, a lot of times in your exercises, um, There are questions, right? So question one might say, um, what is the total sample size? Okay, so I would like you to write question one. I'd like you to type out that question. And then I would like you to look at the chart that you, you submitted or that you, you pasted and, and tell me, right? So the total sample size here in this chart, we can get that from looking at n is 10, right? Or we can look at the total is 10. And so then I want you to actually type in the answer 10. Maybe question two is, what is the percentage of male participants? Okay, so again, if we look at the chart, male participants per, or percent, we're looking at 50%. So I'm gonna be looking for 50 percent. Okay. Um, so make sure that you are labeling your variables. So it wouldn't be uncommon for students just to type in the number male, or I mean 50. Um, and so I want to know what is 50? Is 50 a percentage, right? What is the total sample size? Um, I mean, that kind of speaks for itself as 10. Um, and so make sure that you're you're not just copying and pasting. I, I mean, I want to see that, right? But also um, answering those questions. So answering the questions is the important piece that tells me that you're able to interpret um, your statistical analysis, okay? Submitting the actual output tells me that you're able to follow statistical analysis. So there's two parts here. You're able to follow statistical analysis and complete it, but you're also able to interpret it and answer questions from that. Not every exercise or activity has questions. So just be sure that if they do ask questions that you're submitting those answers. Um, a lot of times you'll see with Kronk exercises, I have a whole laundry list of ones that are due. So just go ahead um, keep your first one that you did here that you submitted. Um, you can then just add exercise 2.1 and label it. it. The title. Okay, and then simply again copy, oh, right click. Select last 
was output. Okay. So you label it um, exercise 2.1. Maybe that's the name or that's the exercise you're working on. Put that label there so I know I'm looking at the right one, um, that you didn't miss any. Um, make sure you right click, click on the output. Um, select last output. Go back to this Word doc. Hit paste. My goodness, my spelling's terrible. Um, select keep source formatting that way it gives me that really nice picture um, and then answer any questions that you will so then in your word document you can file you can save as right and then you can do you know cronk exercise one two five five okay and then you can go ahead and, and save those, um, in which case then you'll be able to upload all of those into Canvas. Okay, that way I'm, I, can, I can see that and I can look at that. Okay, so hopefully that helps share a little bit about how I would like you to, to submit your Cronk exercise assignments um, and how you can sort of um, save those into a Word document. The Word document is very, much more user friendly or simple to upload into Canvas. Okay. Um, something else I wanted to show you. I go back to share screen and I go to data set here. Okay. And I want to go to file, save as. I'm going to do file name. I'm going to call it gender two, um, only because my first couple tries of making this video, I saved it as gender, which you can see there. So I'm going to name this one gender two, and it's in my documents. So I'm going to hit save. Now, like I mentioned, um, you might be building on some of these different data sets. Um, so um, you're going to have to remember where you save them because Cronk might tell you, hey, go back and access the data set titled sample, right? So it's very important that you save the data set as to what they recommend or what he recommends because he might be asking you to use that data set for a different type of analysis or to add to that analysis later on. Okay, so how do I find what document I just saved? Um, I'm gonna open up my statistics again. Bear with me, when you click on SPSS, sometimes it's really slow opening up. Still thinking. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so a couple different places here. So once this is open, we can go to recent files and you can see here that gender two um, is right here. And so we can access it that way um, to open it. Okay, so it kicks me out, but just to show you up pops this data set. So that's how you can access it again um, through SPSS. Um, or if you have it saved in a file somewhere with all of your SPSS output, you can go directly to that area and open it up from there. So there, there really is a few different ways you can do that. 
Okay, I'm trying to think if there's anything I missed. So setting up your, your Cronk exercises in your Word document, how you can submit those, copy and pasting, submitting those into a Word document and then into Canvas. Um, and then this is just a very basic how to get started um, with SPSS and, and sort of where we'll be focusing most of our time. Okay, if there's any questions, um, please let me know. I hope this helps. Thank you.